udah udah the eyes to the right 498 the nose to the left 114 the eyes to the right 498 the nose to the left 114 so the eyes have it the eyes have it unlock in february 2017 MPs voted on whether to trigger Brexit, the Article 50 notice to quit the EU. 498 MPs voted yes, but 114 MPs took a stand and voted no. This video is a tribute to the 114 who spoke out and voted against Brexit at that time. Now or later, people may look back and consider that these 114 MPs were on the right side of history. The first duty of a Member of Parliament is to do what he thinks in his faithful and disinterested judgment is right and necessary for the honour and safety of Great Britain. His second duty is to his constituents, of whom he is the representative, but not the delegate. Sir Winston Churchill your representative owes you not his industry only but his judgment and he betrays you instead of serving you if he sacrifices it to your opinion edmund burke my opposition to referendums as an instrument of government is uh, quite well known and has been frequently repeated throughout my political career and i made no commitment to it accept a referendum. I think uh, particularly this referendum with such an enormous question being asked for a simple yes-no answer on one day with hundreds of complex issues wrapped up within it was a most unsuitable, particularly unsuitable question for a plebiscite of that kind. For my mind, the bottom line is this, that the Prime Minister has no mandate for the extreme Brexit that she is pursuing. It was not on the ballot paper. I have a sense of d disbelief, despair at the decision that is about to be made. Let's be clear, in Edinburgh West, 71% of my constituents voted to remain. There were circumstances in which I would have voted to trigger Article 50. The Prime Minister killed off that prospect for me when she made her speech in Lancaster House, a speech in which she said she would pull us out of the single market. One lesson we should all learn is that never again should a complex economic and international issue be reduced to an X Factor style plebiscite. For the first time on a bill in nearly 20 years in this place, I will be voting against my party's three line whip. In doing so, I am reflecting what I believe to be the majority view of those who elected me, but also of millions of others in Britain who oppose this government's <coughs> choice to pursue the worst and most destructive form of Brexit and all of the negative consequences that that will bring. Yes, I know we're going to leave the European Union. I know the House will vote for that. My vote can't change that. But I believe this bill, this way of Brexiting, will leave us poorer, weaker and at far, far greater danger in Europe and in the West and in this country. And so, Mr Speaker, I say, not in my name. Never, never, never.
I did not vote to hold the referendum, and I campaigned to remain. But people in Wakefield voted to leave. The Labour whip says to trigger. But my Labour values, solidarity, internationalism, social justice say something else. Those of us who campaign for Remain know that Brexit is to happen, but how we greenlight it is a different matter. And all of us have to ask ourselves whether we are confident that as things stand, this government is going to get the best or even a good deal for our country. I cannot answer that question yes. And this bill is our only opportunity to send the Prime Minister back to the drawing board, both on the process and the purpose of her negotiation. We can and we should be doing better. We cannot trigger this process now. We must rethink and go back to the drawing board for the sake of everybody we represent, whether they will leave or remain. I am voting as Members of Parliament should. I am following my own judgment. I am listening to my constituents and to the country. No, I, I have to conclude. But I will not be voting to trigger Article 50 at any stage. I cannot walk blindly through a lobby to give a trigger to a process without a shred of detail from the yeah. government. We are embarking on the most perilous of journeys. The most precious thing that we have as a country, our economy, is being taken to a new place. And yet we have no clarity at all about the destination. Only two of the four nations that make up the United Kingdom voted to leave, and there was no quadruple lock. There was no two-thirds supermajority, which is common in all other countries making major constitutional change. Even so, we are told that the people have spoken. Patriotism requires more than just blind faith. We must remember our history, our values, what we represent and what we stand for. Most of all, we must remember what we stand against. And for all of those reasons, and for the sake of this country that I love, I will be voting against triggering Article 50. Yeah. shockingly irresponsible referendum campaign full of lies, misinformation, dog whistle politics, fear and xenophobia. I can't keep on voting for a process that keeps the people, gives the people of Bridgend no assurance of a secure future for them and their children. I won't be voting to trigger Article 50. There are 17,000 EU nationals living in Hampstead and Kilburn. In Hampstead and Kilburn, we celebrate these EU nationals. They are a part of our fabric as much as everyone else, and they have a right to be here as much as the successive generations that came before them. If I vote for this bill today, I am abandoning my responsibility to these EU nationals who live in my constituency. because I do not believe that the Brexit course we are now set on will make Britain a more prosperous, fairer, more equal, tolerant country. I believe, by contrast, that it will make our politics meaner and it will make our country poorer. Now, I accept the referendum result is to leave, but I do not agree with it. And I certainly do not have to be silent in representing my constituents' no. views. Just like I accept that at the last general election, the benches opposite won a majority. 
but I do not have to agree with every policy the government seeks to implement. The reason I'm passionate about the European Union is because of the part that it's played in keeping a fractious continent from falling out. Now, I know some people say it wasn't the EU, it was NATO, but the EU was born out of a desire to stop war in Europe, and there is no doubt in my mind that having a political framework to resolve conflicts and differences, to negotiate and to compromise, has made a huge contribution to keeping the peace. I hope I am wrong, but I believe that the decision the country took on the 23rd of June uh, will be the biggest self-inflicted wound since our disastrous intervention in Iraq. When we finally know what Brexit really means in substance rather than in utopian promise, of course the British people should have their say. Yes, a narrow majority voted to leave the EU, but the Leave campaign uh, had no plans, no instructions, no prospectus and no vision. No one in this government, no one in this House, no one in this country has any idea what the deal the Prime Minister will negotiate with Europe will be. It is completely unknown. How then can anyone pretend that this undiscussed, unwritten, unnegotiated deal in any way has the backing of the British people? I am confident that the people of Wales did not vote for poverty and they did not vote for our economy to bear the brunt of Brexit. This government is attempting to leave the EU in a haphazard and absolutely reckless way without regard to the constitutional, social or economic consequences. Yeah, yeah. And we're not prepared to let them take Scotland over that cliff with them. Yeah. We've been sent here to stand up for Scotland, to represent our constituents, and we have an absolute duty and obligation to say that we need to make sure that Scotland is a destination in Europe, that we can drive prosperity, that we can drive that fair society. And we say to Westminster, if you want to come out of one union, you may end up coming out of two. The very worst thing about this is that in 20 years' time, when my children are young adults, we will be a less tolerant, a more xenophobic society, because instead of tackling the discrimination and prejudice, this House has pandered to it. Yeah. The question for the Conservatives, Labour and the Lib Dems now is this. What are they going to do to deliver on the promises they made during the independence referendum? What are they going to do to protect and guarantee that EU citizenship which they told us, they told us, was guaranteed by voting to remain in the UK? So the question is for all people in this House, Labour, Lib Dem and Tory, what are you going to do to, the deliver, to deliver on the promises you made to the people of Scotland? Or are you just going to sit there and admit that those promises were lies? I will take no greater honour than following my fellow members here in the Scottish National Party in voting against Article 50. My constituency, like the nation of Scotland, voted to remain, so I make this contribution in this debate, and a mandated by my community and mandated by my nation, in the hope that the United Kingdom Government acknowledges and listens to their concerns.
The EU has had an impact on all of us, from the progress that we have made as member states on protecting rights, workers' rights, parents' rights, the environment, to helping secure peace, security and prosperity over the past 70 years. It is good to see that, in spite of the government's best efforts, that we are going to get a say on the triggering of Article 50, but we did have to drag them kicking and screaming and at great expense into this situation. I also think that it is imperative on all members in this House to reflect on the debt of gratitude that we owe to Gina Miller, who has made this debate today possible, and all of us should reflect on that. Well, the bill does not give power to Parliament to trigger Article 50. It gives power to the Prime Minister, yeah. not to the yeah. Ministers collectively in the Cabinet, not to the Crown in Parliament, but to the person of the Prime Minister to decide on her own initiative when Article 50 will be triggered. No sunset clause, no sunrise clause, no further checks or balances. It's not a parliamentary power, it's almost a presidential power. Yeah, yeah, and I wonder where yeah, yeah, yeah. she might have got a taste <laughs> for that from. Absolutely. There is no white paper, so what we are being asked to sign tonight is in fact a blank check. Here, yeah, yeah. The government, if anything, has a mandate to keep us in the single market. That's what was in the 2015 election manifesto. I know they don't like being reminded about it now, but that's the mandate they were given by the people. It would be one thing if we were to see attempts by the British government to achieve a united position on Brexit from the four nations, but instead we have unilateral decisions on leaving the single market, and we see the British government taking a political decision not to consult the default government on the terms of this Brexit bill. It doesn't have to be this rock-hard Brexit. People in the Highlands, people in Scotland, want hope for the future. The Prime Minister has done everything to try and freeze out Parliament, freeze out the public and freeze out devolved administrations, and that is greatly regrettable. We called for, if there was to be a referendum, have the maximum franchise possible. And this government did the reverse. They denied the vote to the people whose future is most at stake, the young, the 16 to 18 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. And of particular concern to us at the time, they refused to allow EU nationals to vote in the referendum, although we had allowed them to vote in the Scottish referendum. I'm intrigued by what the Prime Minister means when she says we are equal partners. What kind of equality is it when England, ten times our size, attempts to compel us against our will? A massive vote in Scotland to remain and a narrow vote in England to leave results in Scotland leaving on England's terms. here of freedom of movement as a bad thing. But we should remember that for the people trapped behind the Iron Curtain and the Berlin Wall, it is something incredibly precious. In this country, 
EU nationals contribute to our communities and our public services, and 130,000 of them are health and social care workers, doctors, nurses and the people who may be looking after your relatives. We also benefit from freedom of movement. We get to travel, we get to settle, we get to work or study anywhere we like. We're doing this because the UK doesn't like immigration. That is the cold beating heart of this bad British Brexit and it underpins absolutely everything concerning our departure from the yep. EU. It takes precedence over everything else and all other considerations are merely consequential. We see statements like, the bill is not expected to have any financial implications. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to households who will be yes. losing money uh, over the years ahead. Tell that to the many regions that are going to be losing vital European funding and access uh, to programmes. Tell that uh, to universities and people working in research in our health service who will be denied uh, the access to European uh, consortia and funding. I have never pretended that the European Union was perfect or that it doesn't need reform. And I'll admit to even the need for radical reform. But the EU has delivered for Northern Ireland. It has helped deliver parity of esteem and prosperity for all sides of our community. And it has helped to bring peace in very difficult times. The Prime Minister and the Secretary of State have already said, both here and elsewhere, that they have no desire to back, go back to the borders of the past. I'm glad to hear it, and so are the 30,000 people that cross the Irish border every day for work, but they will need a bit more than warm words of comfort. They need a concrete agreement, a concrete arrangement between Dublin and London and Belfast and Brussels in order to sustain reasonable access to their livelihoods. Despite what the government has claimed, the question facing this House today is not the remain or leave choice of that faced by the public in the EU referendum on the 23rd of June last year. It is rather a question of whether the government should be given the power to unilaterally reshape the politics of Britain and Northern Ireland with no accountability from Parliament. It is a question of whether the Conservative Party should be allowed to lock us out of the single market and into a global race to the bottom. Fundamentally, it is a question of whether a Prime Minister with no personal mandate should be allowed to appoint herself the sole interpreter of the referendum result last year. From my opinion and from that of my party, we believe that that should not be the case. The eyes to the right, 498. The nose to the left, 114. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it.